Hello, everybody. Welcome to this webinar uh, that is hosted by CNCF together with the partner of the Kubermatic. My name is Michal Mancho, and I will be guiding you through the webinar, which uh, main topic is about uh, spinning up the Kubernetes infrastructure uh, using the GitOps tooling. So have fun, and let's get started right away. So just briefly about uh, my introduction. Uh, I'm living in Czech Republic and I'm working as the consultant and the cloud architect at uh, the Kubernetes company. And I'm helping the customers with their uh, cloud native journey. Feel free to join me on LinkedIn uh, if you are interested. And if you like this webinar, I will be happy to uh, respond. Uh, today, during the webinar, uh, I will uh, briefly introduce the Kubernetes company, just very briefly, but main focus will be on the project uh, that is composed and using the set of the CNCF tools. And the project is called uh, start.kubernetes. Uh, uh, I will also explain uh, the motivations and uh, why we have created such a tool and what kind of tools uh, from the CNCF landscape we are using. I will also explain a bit more concepts about the, the, the GitOps and on, on which levels we can utilize it. And last but not least, I would like to give some focus to the security, which is an important piece of the, uh, of the puzzle uh, in this setup. Hopefully, we will have also the, uh, the live demo. So I hope that we will fit nicely in the given time. So let me start with the introduction of the Kubernetes company. Uh, so just uh, for you to be aware, so it's a European based company and the employees are all over the world. So everybody are working in the full remote cooperation. And it's one of the, uh, the top Kubernetes employer in Europe. And uh, there are uh, tools like the coupon and the Kubernetes, Kubernetes platform. And those are the tools which will be involved in the, uh, in the webinar today as well. So I will just try to briefly explain those tools as well. The overall mission and vision of the company is the power through automation. So really, we are heavily focused on the automation and simplification of the operations, which is uh, connected with uh, running the, the workload and the application on the cloud native or Kubernetes based stack. Uh, so first of all, I've already mentioned the Cube One and the KKB tools. We won't be today that much focused on the Cube carrier, so we can skip this uh, for now. Uh, so let me start with the Cube One. So Cube One is the tool that is used for uh, an automation of single cluster. It's completely vendor neutral. So you can use this tool to deploy uh, the Kubernetes clusters in the vanilla way on uh, all well-known public cloud providers, as well as on the environments like the on-premise uh, or OpenStack, vSphere, and providers like that, or DigitalOcean. Hetzner, uh, Packet, and so on. So effectively with this tool, it's the CLI tool. So it's from developers to developers. So there is no UI and, and anything. Uh, so it's just a CLI tool with some YAML definition with that you control the provisioning of your Kubernetes cluster. So the result that is usually uh, uh, created out of the after you execute the coupon tool is that you have an HA cluster deployed where usually there is some load balancer, which is used for accessing the Kubernetes API. The control plane and nodes are provisioned and also the worker nodes are provisioned and those are managed again in the declarative way using the resource called uh, machine deployment. We will talk about this a bit more uh, later, and we will also see it during the demo, uh, for sure. Uh, so this is uh, this is one part. That's the cube one, and the second one is uh, the abbreviation is the KKP. So I will be using that during the webinar. Uh, so this tool is effectively the platform that is being used to 
create a single UI that can be used for management of the Kubernetes clusters in the multi-cloud environment. So effectively that gives you uh, the one-stop shop for all of your Kubernetes clusters across different environments, including the public cloud providers, your on-premise environments, or potentially uh, bare metal clusters, or also newly with KKP 2.19, you can also uh, seamlessly integrate your managed Kubernetes clusters from uh, AWS, Google, or Azure. So the services like GKE, AKS, or EKS. So it's also supported and you will have the full control over these clusters in the single place as well. So this is i will just briefly explain some of the major concepts because it will be handy to understand uh, uh throughout the next steps i will be uh, describing so usually how the setup look like is that first of all you provision one let's say management kubernetes cluster uh, with the coupon tool and on top of this management cluster, you will install uh, the KKP platform. So it consists of a couple of core components like the API, uh, the operator, uh, the dashboard, uh, and so on. And then next to that, so this is usually called a master cluster where these components are deployed. Next to that, so it can be either a separate cluster or it can be also deployed on the same cluster. We provision so-called seed cluster. And the seed cluster, again, is the set of the operators and controllers that are uh, running over here. But mainly uh, on this cluster, we provision the, uh, the, con uh, the containerized control plane components of your user clusters so the user cluster is the end let's say uh, entity or the cluster that is actually being used by the end users so by user cluster you can imagine the kubernetes cluster on aws on google and so on and effectively it's represented as the workers that are provisioned in the given uh, environment and all of the control plane components are running as the containers on the seed cluster. So uh, I would keep this level of detail for now. Uh, for sure, if you are interested, I would recommend you to drill into uh, the documentation to see more details and so on, or just reach me out and I will be happy to share more, uh, more details as well. But for now, for the context of this presentation, this should be uh, this should be enough. So right now, let's get started with the idea of the start.kubermatic project, what it is. So very high level, it's effectively the, uh, the wizard or the web application that is uh, running in, uh, in the browser. It's, it has some UI layer and it has some uh, backend logic or some API. Uh, that takes care of um, preparing some content. And the content is the pre-configured setup of the Kubernetes uh, platform where everything is done or prepared based on a couple of inputs that you provide in the, uh, in the wizard. So the overall idea is to go through the wizard. The wizard is composed of the six uh, steps. Uh, and based on your selection, the, the content will be uh, downloaded or generated from this wizard. And you can take this to uh, as a starting point to spin up your Kubernetes infrastructure in a very easy way within a couple of minutes, instead spending a couple of days or weeks uh, trying to do the same just by following uh, the uh, documentation. So I will just briefly try to describe the steps which are uh, available. So in the first step in the wizard, you will be able uh, to choose what is the Git provider, where your repository that will represent uh, the infrastructure as a code 
because we automate everything. So for sure, we would like you to have uh, the declarative definition of all the configuration files and so on. So here you will pick uh, one of the most famous uh, Git providers. I would like to highlight that this week uh, we have actually added the Bitbucket support. So if you are active Atlassian user and you are having your repositories on Bitbucket, so we are more than happy to hear your feedback uh, if you will try that out as well. Anyway, uh, so first of all, after selection of the Git provider, you will select the cloud provider. For now, we have added the support for five most common uh, cloud providers. So those are the public cloud providers like the AWS, Google, uh, Google Cloud or Azure. And from the on-premise uh, environments, we have picked the, the VMware and the OpenStack. I would like to mention one more disclaimer that actually the purpose of this project is to learn and help you to quickly bootstrap the KKP. For sure, you can customize this and extend it later on or you can um, you can just use it for some learning and onboarding purposes. And based on that, you can build your own uh, structure in the similar, similar way. So in the next step, uh, there is the cluster configuration. So here we will uh, ask you about the specific details like what version of the Kubernetes cluster you would like to use for uh, the main cluster what is the container runtime uh, to be used, um, and so on. In the next step, uh, it says the details of the KKP. So here we will ask you what will be the domain um, uh, that will be used to expose the KKP through the ingress resource. Um, uh, and there are also information about some email and the user that will be used for the authentication. And then in the section of the bootstrap, we also demonstrate uh, how you can manage some resources inside the KKP platform in the declarative way. So effectively, you will be asked to provide some name of the project that will be used, uh, the configuration of the seed cluster. So here you will, let's say, configure in which location the seed cluster will be running and how the seed cluster will be configured. And you can also optionally provide the, creden the, the credentials that are being used for provisioning of the user cluster. That is the resource that is in KKP called a preset. Uh, and the last step is effectively the summary. And on the summary page, you will just click generate and you will get the, uh, the content. The content may look like this, for example. So you can see that this is the structure uh, of, the, of the archive. And it has some, first of all, it has some readme files. I will talk about these readme files a bit, uh, a bit later, but in general, these are the instructions how to make this work in your, uh, in your repository or on your local machine. Then there is, if you choose, for example, GitHub as the Git provider, so you will receive the, the GitHub workflow definition. If you will choose the, uh, the GitLab, you will have the GitLab CI YAML. If you choose the Bitbucket, you will have the pipelines YAML uh, instead. So it's very dynamic and all of the content is uh, generated based on your uh, selections. Then uh, this is one uh, I didn't mention yet that for the GitOps tool, we have uh, we choose the, the Flux version 2. Uh, so that's why we have here uh, the Flux directory. And you can see that there is some structure like Flux, clusters, master. So effectively, these are all the resources sorry, that are uh, delivered on the master cluster. Then we have some additional uh, directory which is called SOPS. I will talk about this a bit later. So this is um, for the purpose of providing some encrypted val values directed to your uh, Kubernetes cluster. And then some high level directories are cube one. So this directory includes some uh, declarative definition of, uh, of the cube one cluster. Uh, we will see the example later on. 
Then for the installation of the KKP, we also need two configuration files. So one is uh, the value symbol. So this is effectively set of uh, values for the Helm charts that are being uh, being installed as part of the uh, of the installation. And the second one is the custom resource uh, called Kubernetes uh, configuration, which includes some high level uh, configuration about the authentication, what will be the features enabled on the KKP, and so on. Then there are two more files. One is called the secrets. I will talk about this later. So effectively, uh, here we are generated generating some uh, kind of uh, secrets for you. So for example, uh, some encryption key pair or the user password. So this is the file where we provide to you uh, these generated uh, values. And then there is the Terraform directory that is being used to together with the cube one tool so first of all you will provision some uh, cloud resources uh, with the terraform and then cube one has the native integration with the terraform output so it will read the uh, the values from that and on top of uh, the created resources it will provision the kubernetes cluster again i will try to demonstrate uh, later on so this is the second step uh, so first of all, just to recap, you went through the, the wizard, then you download the, some uh, zip archive, which may look like this. So this is just an example. And then the next step is how do you actually deliver? So we there is a clear separation of responsibilities between what is being delivered by the automated pipeline because uh, for sure we are not able to uh, start everything from scratch. So it's kind of common chicken neck problem. So first of all, we provision the master cluster and install the KKP using the automated uh, pipeline. So there is a schema how the pipeline look like. So there are some stages like validation of the Terraform, uh, application of the Terraform itself, then we uh, apply the coupon, install the KKP, and then we initialize the Flux tool or the, the GitOps tool in general. So this is all managed by the pipeline. But then there is the second part of the responsibilities and all of the resources that can be uh, defined. Uh, and that is fully managed by, uh, by the Flux. So anytime you will update or add or delete some files under the flux directory so this it will be the responsibility of the flux to reconcile the state of these resources on your uh, target cluster uh, we are also providing two ways how you can spin everything up so first of all you can really uh, can utilize the automated pipeline of your git provider so like the GitLab pipeline or GitHub, uh, GitHub Actions or Bitbucket pipelines. Or we have also an alternative way, which can be very handy for understanding the, uh, the product and all of the steps um, by yourself. So we also provide an alternative readme files, which includes the step-by-step -step information again pre-configured very based on your inputs that you will just follow uh, to install and provision everything uh, by uh, by yourself and with that you will also initialize the flux so still you will utilize all of the main concepts you will have the infrastructure as a code in your git repository but the provisioning of the main cluster won't happen with uh, the automated pipeline uh, so just to recap some of the the motivations why we were doing this, because as you may imagine, we are doing this kind of installations in various environments for various customers and so on. And with this project, we wanted to simplify uh, uh, the bootstrapping and onboarding of the customers so that we can really start in a very uh, quick way. Customers can also try this uh, by themselves. Uh, and based on that, they may decide uh, whether they like the platform uh, or not. Um, so the wizard and the documentation are very detailed at this moment. Um, 
so it should be uh, easy to follow. If not, we are always welcome to hear any feedback from uh, from community as all of the stuff we have uh, is open source. Uh, the next motivation is the full automation. So truly, we try to avoid any manual steps at all costs. So in uh, by using this, we are pretty sure uh, that you will only do a couple of the preparation steps and you will have the full uh, automated pipeline, which will do everything for you. And on top of that, we will also set up the, uh, the Flux tool which will be used for the management of the resources in the GitOps way on your Kubernetes uh, cluster. And last but not least, we wanted this to be uh, secure and uh, so that you can really provide all of your configuration files in, um, in the Git repository. So to avoid the situations like you are limited to commit something to the repository or of course it's always a bad practice to provide any plain uh, text values and secrets in the repository so to avoid this we have decided to use the mozilla subs tool uh, which by the way has the native uh, support in the flux version 2 so you can integrate with this tool uh, directly uh, by using the decryption provider uh, with the flux. So we will see this later on how we utilize that. And next to that, why we have uh, chosen the, the SOPS tool is that we are not only delivering some secret resources in Kubernetes. For that, you can use the tools like uh, uh, sealed secrets or Vietnamese secrets and so on. Uh, but there are also some other files which include some a sensitive configuration like some uh, values file or uh, for example the preset or other uh, files may have uh, some sensitive value so in general we use the subs tool to encrypt all of the sensitive values in the repository and these are either picked by the pipeline or uh, the flux has this direct integration and we are using that so that um, you can commit the encrypted human readable file in the repository and that will be uh, safely delivered to your Kubernetes cluster. Last but not least, this is built for the purpose of the onboarding, as I have mentioned. So you can take this, extend it or um, simply uh, customize it to your, uh, to your need and uh, you should have a very uh, sustainable a base for your Kubernetes infrastructure. I also wanted to uh, uh, briefly mention about the CNCF landscape. I believe you have all seen this uh, kind of uh, landscape, which is kind of massive, and it's a categorized projects which are in the various level uh, uh, of the the acceptance in the CNCF. Uh, in general, and I just wanted to see which kind of projects are involved in uh, in what we are building, and this is uh, this is the output. So I found about twenty projects which are connected and which are actively used uh, as part of the Star KKP project, um, because we are not only delivering the plain Kubernetes cluster, but Together on the KKP platform, we are uh, directly uh, providing the support, for example, for some observability uh, stack or monitoring, logging, and alerting. So uh, this is uh, everything what we deliver out of the box. We utilize, for example, the cert manager to provide the certificates. We use the engines to expose the application. Um, there is in both Cube one and KKP, uh, there is a new support for the Cilium uh, CNI uh, that was uh, recently added in the in the landscape as well. So here, this is just a very brief uh, input. What kind of uh, projects and tools are involved in the in the start KKP project that you can uh, try on your own and use? Uh, very quickly. 
So to move on, I also wanted to briefly explain how it actually works under the hood. So right now I will try to be a bit more technical and I will uh, just briefly try to explain the specific steps which are happening either uh, by you if you will follow the, the local readme files or which will be happening inside the pipeline. And with that, you will hopefully uh, understand which components are involved and how we automate the whole thing. So first of all, we start with provisioning of the cloud resources uh, using the Terraform uh, tool. So for each provider, we have uh, the Terraform uh, example uh, that can be used. And uh, then the output from the Terraform is being used uh, uh, by the Cube One to provision uh, the Cube One uh, or the simply HA uh, Kubernetes cluster. So this will be usually the, the result. So as already mentioned before, so there will be usually some load balancer uh, service. There will be set of the control plane uh, machines, virtual machines or whatever is available on that provider. And also set of the workers uh, that will be used for uh, running the workload on the master cluster. So for actual installation of the KKP, these workers will be utilized. Then, uh, so this is how Let's imagine that this is the empty uh, so-called master cluster in the terminology we use. There is also some concept of some add-ons. So out of the box, let's say we provision some storage class. We also uh, set up the nodes autoscaler. So you also don't have to uh, care that much uh, about scaling up and down uh, the, the machines based on the current utilization and it will be all managed automatically with the nodes autoscaler. You can just configure what will be the maximum and the minimum uh, nodes that are uh, in use. So after that, so for now we have an empty Kubernetes cluster, vanilla, and right now we will use the KKP installer. So uh, KKP is officially delivering the uh, the archive, which includes the binary called Kubernetes installer. And after running this uh, installer and providing the values file in the Kubernetes configuration, there will be four namespaces created. So first one will be Kubernetes, where the already mentioned uh, dashboard API and operator components and controllers will be, uh, will be running. Next to that, uh, the uh, as the identity provider, we are using DEX, which is also uh, part of the CNCF uh, projects. Uh, so that will be used for the authentication. Uh, uh, next to that, for exposure of the application, we uh, deploy the Nginx ingress uh, controller. And for the provisioning of the certificates, uh, the cert manager will be installed. So this is, let's say, the core components that are installed by the installer. But right now we continue because we would like to simply demonstrate how to uh, automate the other stuff and so on. So we continue uh, by, okay, so this is one more preliminary step. So uh, after the previous step, there is, um, a required step that to be able to access the, the UI on some specific domain, you have to register uh, the DNS, uh, DNS endpoint. Uh, this is very much uh, pro, uh, cloud provider specific. Again, there are uh, instructions how to deal with that uh, in the documentation. And for example, for AWS, we also provide some automated module in the Terraform, which can take care of this step uh, for you. Anyway, next step after you have the KKP installed, the domain is registered. After the domain is registered, the certificates will get provided automatically and so on. So at this moment, you can start using the KKP in your browser. Uh, but right now, the next step is the installation of the Flux tool. There is, for version two, there is the CLI uh tool called flux 
uh, that has the bootstrap command which is used and it will effectively in your git repository it will uh, bootstrap itself so it will also create the commits with the definitions of the uh, of the components so all of the deployments all of the service accounts and so on so it will be all created declaratively in your repository and it will also create so-called uh, flux customization which is please do not do not mix that with the native uh, kubernetes templating uh, system or tool so this is the flux specific customization which is an api resource that is being used for uh, the purpose that uh, you describe that this from this repository, from this path, deliver the resources to my uh, Kubernetes cluster. So this is just a very brief uh, uh, description. So let's try to have a look what happens next, because uh, as you remember, we have some flux uh, pre-configured files. So effectively it's a bunch of Helm charts and next to that some other resources. So at this step, uh, the resources like the monitoring, logging, and uh, OAuth2 proxy and MinIO, so these components are installed by the Flux uh, in the automated way. So these are the examples of the, the Helm charts uh, that are being delivered from uh, the Kubernetes repository. And next to that, we also deliver a couple of uh, of Kubernetes API resources. So this is based on what you have provided in the wizard. So with this step, we will configure the seed resource. So effectively that configures where your um, control plane uh, components of the user clusters will be running. Next to that, we define some project. We will configure the user that will be out of the box admin. Uh, we provide some additional KKP settings, which is like uh, what should what features should be visible uh, in the UI. There are some uh, custom links and so on. Uh, and then, sorry, I have skipped one more step. Actually, this is, this is what is being delivered first. So we also delivered the customization. Another one, uh, which has the already mentioned SOPS decryption provider uh, defined. Uh, so it means that here we are saying, okay, we have some other directory which may include some encrypted YAML resources in the Git repository. And from this repository, please deliver the resources to my cluster as well. And this is the example, like uh, how we, for example, deliver uh, the preset or so-called cluster templates and so on. So these are some additional uh, resources that are managed by this customization. So this is, let's say, the complete picture, what you will get as the result. So you can you can see a lot of logos over here and a lot of uh, well-known tools that will be pre-configured automatically uh, for you. And you can start provisioning your um, Kubernetes clusters on which you will run your actual applications and the, uh, and the workload. So uh, I also wanted to mention uh, that effectively this gives you a huge power of what you can do with the, uh, with the GitOps. And also I wanted to demonstrate a bit how we demonstrate everything in the declarative uh, way. So for example, here on the left side, so this is an example of how you can uh, bootstrap the Flux tool. And this is here at the bottom it's effectively the, the result. So it creates the commits in which there are a couple of files and inside of these files, you will find the, the customization and all of the definition for the flux itself. So this is also managed in the declarative way. If you will, for example, decide to upgrade the, the tool itself, so you can do it by updating these files in the repository, or of course you can upgrade the, uh, the flux locally. And if you will perform the, the bootstrap again, it will update the components 
uh, and potentially update the uh, the synchronization files as well. But more for the context of the KKP on the right side, I also mention some more examples what you can manage in the declarative way. So first of all, I already mentioned some concept of the cluster template. So this can be used to really simplify the bootstrapping of the Kubernetes clusters for your end users. So if you are, for example, having the Kubernetes platform as a service for other customers uh, so that you can use the features of the multi-tenancy and set up uh, the roles and permissions for each customer in different project and for each customer declaratively define different options for the cluster templates uh, and so on. You can, there is a concept of the add-ons uh, that you can uh, use as well. So it will be all, again, uh, declarative. There is also native support for the OPA uh, policies and bunch of other uh, KKP resources. There is one exception that the user cluster itself is not yet supported as the uh, as the resource that you can manage through uh, the YAML or the kubectl. Uh, this one can be only managed through uh, Kubernetes API directly, but uh, this is about to change in some of the early upcoming uh, KKP releases. And right now I'd like to mention some kind of inception that you can do with this platform, because first of all, we have created in automated way, the management master cluster with the KKP and so on. From this KKP, you can create other Kubernetes clusters. And on these Kubernetes clusters, you can install again the GitOps tool that will be again automatically delivering the, uh, the resources or your applications to these uh, user clusters. And in community repository, we have an example of the Flux 2 KKP add-on as well as the Argo CD. So if you have any preference and if you are uh, using the Argo CD, so for sure you can uh, use it as well uh, in, this, uh, in this way. Uh, next to that, if you are a programmer, so you may not like that much to go through the wizard in the browser and the UI all over again, if you will be doing that uh, multiple times. So everything, of course, can be managed and controlled by the API. So the wizard itself that is running on star.kubernetes.com has an API. Uh, here I have added a little disclaimer. I will be happy that we will provide some open API definition for this API so that you can easily get some example how the structure of the payload uh, should look like. Uh, but then you would simply run the single API command and out of that you will receive uh, the zip file uh, that will get everything uh, pre-configured. So this is also uh, possible with the, uh, with the project. Uh, so right now you are, uh, I believe, interested in the ways uh, of the security aspects. So as I already mentioned, one of the main goals was to really put 100% of all of the sensitive configurations and everything in the repository. So do not really have the mixture that we manage declaratively and in the GitOps way, like 80%, and we have to do 20% manually. So we wanted to truly avoid this. So for this, we have uh, chosen the uh, the SOPS tool, uh, which can be used with different uh, encryption backends. Uh, so out of the box, we are using H. So that's a Go uh, binary that is used for uh, the encryption and decryption by using uh, a key pair of the secret key and the public key, uh, but you can also configure SOPs uh, to use the vault or some PGP keys uh, and so on. The very nice feature of the SOPs is that, uh, as you can see from this GIF example, which is taken from 
uh, the the repository that is public. Uh, so the nice feature is that the files are still human readable and only the sensitive values are uh, encrypted. So, for example, if you will imagine some JSON or YAML file, so you will only encrypt the specific parts of the of the file and the rest will be still human readable and so on so you can use the subs tool locally to update the values to see the actual values to decrypt or encrypt the file so we also provide some cheat sheet uh, documentation how to how to use that properly and this is an example file that we generate out or that is part of the uh, that is part of the archive that you download it's called secrets md but at the same time we also put this file in the git ignore uh, directly because we don't want you to commit this in the repository so this is only meant to be used for the person that is doing the setup because here we provide you the information about the secret key that can be used for the uh, decryption of the sensitive uh, values and we also generate some random password that is used for accessing the uh, kkp dashboard so again this one should not be exposed anywhere uh, in the repository so this is really available for the purpose of the repository preparation and then uh, you can uh, you should never ever uh, commit this kind of file in the repository. Uh, here is another example. Uh, as I mentioned, so only the person who creates the or who downloads the bundle will have access to uh, uh, to the H key, effectively to the secret key that is used. Uh, but this one has to be for sure used by the pipeline. So we guide you through the steps how to set up your Git repository to make this secret available. Or in case that you are doing this locally, it won't be never exposed anywhere and the, the secret key will be only on your machine. But the second place is also the, the Kubernetes cluster where the Flux is configured. And here you can see the example of the subs customization that we deliver, which is saying that from my repository that is created, oh, well, this definition is done automatically, uh, but from this path, uh, there is a definition that there is a decryption provider subs, which is pointing to the secret with some name. So uh, in the steps and the instructions that we deliver, we give you the guidance how to properly create this, uh, this secret uh, so that the secret key is available uh, for the flux on the Kubernetes cluster. And here on the right side, you can see an example of the preset. So the, as I already mentioned uh, before, the preset is a set of the pre-configured cloud credentials usually that is used for provisioning of the user cluster. This is an example of the AWS preset, which accepts the access key and secret access key. And next to that, there is also the VPC ID that is being used for the deployment. But you can see that VPC ID is the plain text value. There is uh, nothing secret if in case that it's secret for you. So for sure you can configure that it will be encrypted as well. Uh, but then the specific two values are, uh, are encrypted and there is only the public key uh mentioned over here uh, here you can see that there are some additional metadata for the subs uh, here you can see that there are a couple of ways how you can configure the backends but we are as already mentioned we are using the uh, the h and there is for example also the regex that was used for encryption of this file so with that you can control which fields are uh, encrypted and which are uh, which are not. So right now, uh, it's a demo time. So I will be happy right now to demonstrate live how it looks like. So I have prepared some uh, GitHub scenario as well. So I have the live repository 
that I prepared in advance. And I have also run the pipeline already because it takes about 15 to 20 minutes to spin up everything. So I wanted to avoid this during the live demo. But anyway, I will still show you the live, uh, the live wizard. So uh, here you can see that I was talking about the six steps. So right now we will try to go through uh, these steps. So first of all, you can select some uh, Git provider. You can notice that if I choose the GitHub, I have available just AWS and Google Cloud. This is because of the limitation that we need to store somehow the Terraform state somewhere. Uh, and for these providers, we uh, directly utilize some S3 or Google storage uh, for, uh, for the specific bucket. But for example, if you pick uh, GitLab, we are directly utilizing the feature of the GitLab, which supports the storage of uh, Terraform state directly in your project or repository. So if you pick the GitLab, you have available all of the currently supported cloud providers. So for example, let's pick, uh, let's pick Google or Maybe let's pick AWS. It doesn't really matter for the demo. Here you can see that uh, you can define your own cluster name that is being used as the prefix for most of the cloud resources being created. You can select the, uh, the version uh, that will be used for provisioning. You can select the container runtime. You can enable or disable the autoscaler add-on that will be uh, on the cluster. So here we are saying that we will let the autoscaler to go from one up to 10 uh, workers. Uh, here we define the region where it will be defined. You will define uh, which instance type is used for the workers. And there is also the optional step to enable, I've already mentioned that we also have for AWS the module to automatically register the DNS, but let's keep that for now uh, in the D1. Uh, the next step is the setup of the KKP. So here you can choose which KKP version you would like to use. Here you can define the uh, point so it can be something like this. So it's one of our domains that we can much easily pull away uh, and the next one is a big issue email because all of the folks are utilizing the less incorrect cluster issuer. So for that, we need to have some email which gets the notification about some potential expirations and so on. And we are also using the OAuth2 proxy uh, for the authentication. And we can, for example, control that only the users with the Kubernetes domain will be able to access uh, some monitoring uh, services like Grafana, Alert Manager, and so on. But for sure, there is a very huge uh, set of options that can be used. Um, so this is just a very uh, small example of how it can be configured. So right now I'm in the step of the KKP bootstrap. So let's call the project demo. Here I define the data center. So it could be AWS U Central, for example. Um, that is from sign off in Germany. I'll pick the region. And here I won't be providing the real values right now, but uh, here you can generate, or I would for sure recommend to have some separate IAM user in AWS and for that generate the secret uh, keys that will be used for provisioning of the user cluster. And here you will have to write uh, the values and those will be encrypted inside uh, the preset resource uh, in your repository out of the box. So right now we are in the last step. So it's effectively the summary and recap of all of the inputs that you have provided. So as you can imagine, and based on what you have seen, there are a lot of options, some of the conditional 
steps, what you can provide and so on. So here you should really see all of the options and the inputs uh, that you provided. And as soon as you click the generate, it will uh, download the, uh, the archive and you effectively start to becoming the automation superhero uh, and so on. But uh, so the next step is that you just unzip the archive and inside this archive, uh, I will demonstrate this on the live repository already. So here in the next step, I have prepared the repository. So for this demo, I have uh, decided to use GitLab with combination of the Google Cloud, but you can really, there is a huge metrics already. So you can do your own combination and try it with your favorite Git provider and the, and the Cloud uh, provider. But here, I just wanted to show you what you get out of the box, uh, I mean, live. So first of all, there will be uh, the GitLab CI uh, YAML. It's not that complex, it's only about 200 lines and it's split it inside five stages. You can, I can show you the real pipeline that I executed a couple hours back. Uh, so this is, uh, these are the stages. Uh, it's matching the image and the flow I was describing at the beginning. So effectively, here it creates the, the cloud resources with Terraform. Here the Kubernetes cluster is provisioned with the cube one, then the KKP is installed, and then Flux is uh, bootstrapped. That's it. Uh, nothing else. So this is the responsibility of, uh, of the pipeline. But we are also providing all of these files that are pre-configured and so on. So here's, for example, the cube one. Here you can see, uh, for example, Kubernetes configuration. So all of the values that we have provided somewhere are somewhere defined in the specific configuration files. And you can see that the, the values that are somehow sensitive are encrypted using the the SOPs. So it's very, very important that we do not expose anything uh, in the plain text in the repository. Uh, so here's another example of the Flux uh, directory structure. So here we can see this is corresponding to the namespaces where the resources are being delivered. And here we have some examples of for example, the seed definition. So again, these were some of the values I was providing in the wizard. Um, then we generate the, the project. We do some binding with the user and so, and so, and so on. So effectively the result is, uh, so let me switch to the other tab. So the result is after you set up the DNS record, so you will have the KKP platform up and running. You will be uh, the admin user, so you can go to all of the available settings that are in the KKP. Uh, but mainly you can start creating the clusters out of uh, the box. So right now, because we wanted to keep it simple, but at the same time, you can extend it. But uh, for simplicity, because I have picked the Google, so also my seed is configured for the Google provider. So right now I can set up uh, a new cluster on Google. I can pick my favorite um, uh, a network management. So I can generate some name version. I can decide what users will have access through the SSH. I can define the ciders and set up some additional features on the cluster. So kick is more, so it's nice generated name. Uh, and here I have uh, the, uh, the selection of the KKP uh, preset, or I can provide, uh, so for Google, to be able to provision something, you need to create the um, service account first. So here, effectively, you will provide the service account, which is the base64 encoded value of the JSON. And after that, you will be able to create the cluster. 
it takes some time. So I've already created some cluster in advance. So this is an example of the user cluster that was created. Again, just to recap the concept, the control plane components are running on the seed cluster. You can separate, like, you can decide that you will have the seed cluster per region or per the cloud provider. So for example, all of your AWS clusters will be running with the control plane components on the single seed cluster. So this is for sure uh, possible uh, as well. Uh, so this is an example of the user cluster that has one machine deployment. So this uh, effectively represents a, a Kubernetes cluster that has one worker node of uh, the specific type, which is, I don't see it anymore quickly right now. It is the, okay, it should be, okay, this is the machine type and one standard two. Uh, anyway, right now on this cluster, you can decide to scale the replicas of this machine deployment. So effectively you will get more workers. You can also set up the autoscaler add-on again for the user cluster, or you can set up the add-on for GitOps so that your applications will be uh, delivered here in the automated way. But let me do another quick demo. I have prepared a pull request on top of my repository. And inside this pull request, I have some commits. Uh, first commit is creating the cluster template. So that is, uh, as you can see right now, I don't have any cluster template. Uh, and I'm only able to create clusters on Google. So in my pull request, I'm also adding the support for AWS. So I'm defining more uh, data centers under the seed resource. Uh, so I, I'm enabling uh, the, the deployment in the US and also in France. And next to that, I'm also adding some more regions for Google. So it should enable Google in Finland and India. So I just wanted to try to demonstrate the concept of the GitOps. So let's consider that somebody did a review and I will just blindly merge it for now. But for sure, this should follow some uh, some regular process that you are used to. Um, right now, switch. I, I have in these terminals. I have already configured the access to the Kubernetes API, and I can have a look at the customizations that are on this cluster. So you can see. Let me check what is the commit actually. Ah, okay, so right now, actually the con reconciliation already happened. So as you can see, this commit is already matching uh, my merge commit, which I have done just now. And it's already reconciled. So it means that the change was already applied on my cluster uh, by the flux. Here at the, the top, this is just another example. So this is the three machine deployments that were created automatically. And because I'm using, I have configured the autoscaler, so it has already done some job and it has already scaled the, the nodes across the regions. So effectively right now I have seven workers available uh, in my cluster uh, to run the workload. And I can try to see where my changes were applied. So I was creating the cluster template. So right now you can see that the cluster template is available over here. And I can quickly provision the cluster out of this template. You can see that there are the details of the configuration. Uh, so which options I have enabled, uh, how the cluster should look like. We can try it out. So right now, another cluster will be started, uh, but it will take some time. Maybe it will be super quick, but um, 
we don't have to wait for this. Anyway, the second change I was doing was enablement of the AWS provider by updating the seed resource that was applied by the Flux. So right now you can see that I'm able to set up the AWS cluster in Paris and US. And also for Google, I'm able to use the Finland and the India uh, regions. So that's about it. And that's, uh, that's the very quick example, which I wanted to demonstrate how you can keep everything up to date and in sync uh, by using the automated pipeline and the tools like a flux uh, on your repository. And with that, I can really manage all of the resources and all of the configurations of the KKP platform. There is also, I will provide all of the links in the end, uh, so you can really uh, go through that. Also the repositories that I've created are public, so you can just look around. But I also wanted to mention very detailed uh, documentation that we have created. So if you go to, sorry, if you go to the Kubernetes documentation, and go to the KKP, there is a very quick link, which is called Start with KKP, that will guide you to the documentation pages, where we explain all of the concepts, how it works, very detailed documentation of the wizard, and also the steps, how to set up your repository to be able to run it. And next to that, there are also some troubleshooting cheat sheets, how to get access to cluster, how to validate the readiness, how to work with the with the SOPs and so on. So with that, let me switch back to the presentation. Uh, so here comes the, uh, the supporting step, like really try it out. If you are interested in what you have just seen, try it on your own. So the wizard and the star.kubermatic.com is public endpoint that you can use. Uh, and with that, you can try to build the very same uh, infrastructure using a bunch of the CNCF uh, tools uh, that were already mentioned as well. In case that you will have any questions, so there is the community Slack uh, called Start Kubernetes where you can ask the questions as well or feel free to reach us through some general contact um, contact form and so on. Or feel free to reach me directly or anybody, if you have anybody in your network from Kubernetes, so they will be for sure very happy to help you with your questions as well. This is the uh, one of the last slides where I just wanted to give the kudos to the guys who were participating on the project. So. Uh, first of all, it started as my idea and but from Sasha, I have uh, received the support and we have decided to get a bunch of very experienced uh, engineers from the company who participated on the development, both on the API and the UI part. So I would like to thanks to Marco, Sasha, Martin and Sebastian, and also to the ladies who are helping us with a couple of UI and UX, uh, UX stuff. So we are at the very end of the webinar. I hope you have enjoyed that. Uh, it was a pleasure uh, talking to you, at least this way, virtually. Here you can see uh, a couple of the links to the project itself, to the demo repositories, either on GitLab or GitHub, uh, and also the link to the documentation. So. Thank you very much uh, for watching until the very end and have a great day. See you. Bye-bye.